Hello, and welcome to the video tutorial that will show you how to create a texture, import it to Hammer Editor, and ultimately use it in game. In this tutorial, I will use Photoshop to edit an image taken from Google, and teach you the basics of how to make your material as smooth as possible, and one little trick to give it a slightly better quality. If you don't have Photoshop, you can still complete this tutorial, so don't worry. First of all, make sure you download these two files provided in the description. Now open your internet browser and go to the VTF edit download link, also provided within the description. Here we go. Now it's easiest to download the archive, but you can also download the installer if you like. You save it to your desktop and minimize Internet Explorer, or whatever other browser you use. Now depending on what you downloaded, either unzip it or install it. Now here is the program that will make your image into a valve texture, the VTF edit. Open up your internet browser again and go to Google. Now search for texture and choose the one you like. Now it's best to get a flat image since it's easier to make a texture from it. Ooh, that one was nice. But I'd rather go with the wooden texture today. So I go with this one. Just save it to your desktop and open it with Adobe Photoshop. Don't worry, if you don't have Photoshop, you can use any other image editor if you like, but I'd prefer Photoshop. If you don't have any image editor at all, you really should make a Google search for free image editor. I'm pretty sure there are some nice ones out there. Anyway, here is our image, and as you can see, there are too much shadows here and too much light on other parts. So I'm gonna fix this quickly and I'm not giving a tutorial on this, I'm just gonna do it. There we go. And now we're going to unlock the layer by double clicking here and press OK. Unlocked. And here's a trick that will make your image look slightly better. Go to Image, Adjustments and Curves. Now. These curves can be hard to understand at first, but this trick is quite simple. Just pull down here, and pull up here. And now the image actually has better color and better lighting. You can do it a lot, and you can do it a little. It all depends on how you want the image to look like. But I want slightly more. And you can actually do this with any image you like. For example, a photo you've taken. So try it out and experiment with this. Now I'm happy with this one, so I'm gonna press OK. Now we're going to resize the canvas of the image to about double the size, or maybe a bit more than that. Press OK, and now we have a lot more workspace. Select the rectangular select tool and set the feather to a higher amount depending on the size of your image. And select it like this, and then duplicate it. Now we're going to press Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. As you can see, the edge is fading out exactly like we want it. Now place it on the opposite side of the image. and select both layers and merge them together. Now we're doing exactly the same thing on the side of the image. So I'm going to fast forward here because you already know how to do this. But now we're going to flip horizontal instead. Now merging the images. Now we're going to crop the image exactly at the edges and press enter when you're done. Last of all we are going to resize the image. You can use any size you like but 512 times 512 is preferable. That looks good. So now we are going to save the image. Go to file Save as, save it as an TGA or Targa, 
You don't have to save it as an Targa, but it is recommended since Targa is an uncompressed image format, which allows you to keep the images full quality. Now close Photoshop. Here is our final image that is going to be the texture. Open a folder where you saved VTF Edit and drag your image onto the VTF Edit icon. Never mind this, just press OK and your texture will be created. Here it is. Go to File, Save As, and I want to call this wood underscore floor underscore one. It will now be saved as a VTF wherever you choose to put it. I put it on my desktop. And now we will create the VMT that tells the game where to look for a picture. So open up the example you downloaded. Right now this is far from finished, so we'll start with lighting. You can either use Vertex Lit Generic or Light Mapped Generic. And there's one simple rule that tells you which of these to use. Use the Light Map Generic if you're going to use the texture on a face that will never move. The Vertex Lit Generic is commonly used with models, but should also be used if your texture face is going to move from a darker area to a lighter one, or the other way around. Now, here's an example of this. The red and blue surfaces are Vertex Lit Generics, and the green one is a light map generic. This is what happens when the surfaces go from a light area to a dark one. As you can see, the vertex lit generic grows darker along with its environment, while the light map generic stays exactly the same. This is because the vertex lit generic is generated every frame, while the light map generic is only generated when the map is compiled. But you should only use the vertex lit generic when necessary, because it uses a lot of CPU. And this is the location relative to the materials folder of the game you are mapping for where you will put the VTF and the VMT. I will create a folder inside the materials folder that I will call PB underscore textures. And here I will type wood underscore floor underscore one, since that was the name of my texture. We also want to change the surface prop to wood. The surface prop decides what sounds to make when hit and what gibbs to produce when broken. And since this is going to be a floor, I will choose light map generic. If you want your texture to reflect the world around it, add this string under the surface prop. In order for this to work, you must place at least one environment cube map in your level. When you're done here, go to file, save as, and type in the name of your texture. Mine was wood underscore floor underscore one. And this is important. You need to click on this box and choose all files. Then you have to give the file name the extension .vmt and save it to your desktop. Now I will create a folder called finished materials. And here I will place all my finished VMTs and VTFs just so I can keep them organized. So go ahead and place your finished texture and your VMT into the finished materials folder. Open it up, and here I will place a folder called pb underscore textures. And I'm gonna place my files into that folder. And now we will import the files into Hammer Editor. Open up my computer, local disk, program files, Steam, Steam apps, username and then the game you want to map for. I'm gonna choose Half-Life 2. Go into HL2 and materials and here you will place the folder called pb underscore textures in my case then. You have probably named it something else. To make sure this is done correctly open up the VMT, check the folder name should be pb underscore textures inside the materials folder and my texture name is wood underscore floor underscore one which also is correct. So let's open Hammer Editor. First of all make sure you have the right game selected in my case Half-Life 2. Open up Hammer Editor and create a new map. Press browse and type in your material name here and it will show up. Just like that. This is how it will be in game. It's making all the right sounds. 
Have fun.